welcome to Rock and Control. Where we discuss what roles emotions play in reaction to setback, hardships, and adversity. We're your hosts, Addie and Molly. On today's episode of Emotional Control, why this affects mental reactions, physical responses, and limited opportunities. Mental health is a level of psychological well-being or an absence of mental illness. The state of someone who is functioning at a satisfactory level of emotional and behavioral adjustment. Mental and emotional health work cohesively together so one's mind can reach full potential. Mind-body connection is how your body responds to the way you think, feel, and act. When I get upset, I have a problem of withdrawing myself from other people. I allow whatever that has upset me to get into my head, and I push people that care about me away. I end up closing out my family and friends. My friends try to reach out to help me, but I end up ignoring them and trying to deal with the situation alone, which makes it even harder and results in me feeling helpless. Sometimes I cope with these feelings in harmful ways, even though I know deep down the positive way to help myself, but I always end up running to the negatives. For many cases like this, there are harmful and beneficial coping mechanisms. Harmful ways include denial, withdrawal, bullying, self-harm, and or substance use. The symptoms include mood swings, hallucinations, suicidal thoughts, low or no energy, feeling helpless or hopeless, feeling fatigue, and or the ability to perform everyday tasks. A beneficial type of coping mechanism is the acronym PAT that indicates that a person should pause, acknowledge, think, and help. Although this is a small way to help, it prevents many negative outcomes in one's life. It is significant that a person struggling with mental illnesses should ask for help, process their feelings, and realistically see positive outcomes in all situations. My sister has struggled with depression and anxiety all her life. Growing up, it has made it harder for her to express her emotions and feelings clearly. When she first started feeling this way, she was in denial of the possibility of having a mental illness. She had feelings of worthlessness and felt hopeless. She tried getting help in many ways, including medication and counseling. These two things ended up helping her a lot, along with journaling and talking to people around her about her struggles. She recently wrote a blog about her hardships and how much they have helped her grow and become the person she is today. In the book, The Curious Incident of a Dog in the Nighttime, Christopher has been diagnosed with Asperger's. He acts in ways that others view as illogical. He allows the color yellow and brown to ruin his mood. Every morning, Christopher looks out the window and sees the color of cars. If he sees three yellow cars in a row, he automatically believes he is going to have a bad day. If he sees five red cars, he is going to have a good day. Christopher allows irrelevant things to affect his mood, but he's not in control of it. Christopher also compares real-life situations to mathematical prime numbers. This is illogical to other people because he uses math to problem-solve instead of realistic solutions. His mentality is very unusual compared to the norms of society. When Christopher finds out his mom is in fact alive and not dead from a heart attack, he tries to withdraw himself from the environment around him. He doesn't know how to cope with his emotions in this scenario since he bottled up all of his feelings. It is very serious that a person tries to understand and cope with their emotions to be an all-around healthy person. Mental health and emotional health can affect your physical health. This leads to lashing out and behaving unnecessary in situations. Physical health is the state of being free from illness or injury. It's critical for your overall well-being, and it is the most visible dimension of health. Key components of physical health are physical activity, nutrition and diet, medical self-care, rest, and sleep. Absence of one of these can cause instability in one's life. Your physical health and reactions affect your emotions, and emotions affect your physical health. When having a bad or sad day, some are affected both emotionally and physically. Unprocessed feelings can cause negative behaviors and physical reactions. At the elementary school I work at, the kids can sometimes have negative reactions to their feelings. They'll get upset because they find something unfair, get in trouble, or they're they're not getting along with other kids. This can cause cause them to react poorly, either resulting in them hurting other kids or yelling at them. They're not fully emotionally stable yet because they are young, so it's unclear to them how to react correctly to situations. Another personal example of a negative physical response is when my brother's friend obtained so much anger that he punched a hole in his wall. This proves that your emotions affect your physical responses and both should be controlled. 
and this caused him more anger that he had to pay for the wall to be repaired. But he luckily didn't punch another hole in the wall while paying the cost of the damage. In the book, The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime, Christopher has a difficult time perceiving emotions of the people around him. He doesn't understand people's emotions until they have a physical response. When someone is upset, Christopher can only tell once the person starts crying. He can only tell if he sees the physical evidence of their sadness. Another example from the book is the way Christopher shows his emotions through physical responses. At the beginning of the book, a policeman was questioning Christopher about the murder of Wellington. Christopher does not like strangers talking to him, so this made him nervous. He let his emotions control him, and that resulted in him lashing out at the police and hitting him. When hitting the police, he was in more trouble than what he was supposed to be in. Christopher received more punishment, which led to harsh consequences. The last key point of emotional control that can cause setbacks, adversity, and hardships is limited opportunities in everyday life. Negative emotions limit your possibilities. If one isn't emotionally controlled, then they might miss out on opportunities. A negative outlook leads to a negative mindset, while a positive outlook leads to a positive mindset. This can cause someone to feel or act in a negative way based on how they look, how they have a look in their own life. Emotional control is important because each person has the capability of making their life the best it can be. Ranky Shakur once said, There is no giver of happiness or misery. You create your own happiness and become miserable on your own. This is hard to fully understand when emotions get the best of you, but it's very accurate to try to comprehend that a person controls their own emotions. Limitations come from various emotions such as anger, depression, anxiety, and or many others. They can cause functional limitations, reduce interest in activities and relationships, sleep problems, and fatigue. Emotions can impact your relationships with others, work life, and social interactions. They have the capability of getting the best of us at times and limiting possibilities in our lives. For example, if you are upset or sad, you might skip out on the opportunity of hanging with friends. Christopher had the opportunity to be helped at the train station by strangers, but instead took out his Swiss Army knife. This limited his possibility of getting help because of fear. He could have prevented this and got the help he needed, but his emotions were not controlled. This explains more of the mind-body connection. His mental health ran to fear, which led to his physical responses being negative. Although most parents teach their kids not to talk to strangers and be aware in unfamiliar situations, Christopher most likely did the right thing. Threatening someone with a Swiss Army knife might not might have not been the right physical response to this interaction, especially if he could have easily gotten help. Other people, like myself, may react poorly in arguments and disagreements. There has been countless of times where I have slammed doors or went for a run because it releases the stress, anger, and or fear within me. This has led me into situations that could have been preventable, and it limits me into, to enjoy myself and the people around me. It has also limited me to the opportunities of social interactions or events that I never attended because of my attitude. Mental and physical health are big factors in emotional control. Emotions are critical to your everyday life. The way you feel affects the way you think and how you behave. It is essential for people to take care of themselves because most people rarely talk about their feelings and were never taught how to deal with them. This could lead to mental and physical mistakes. Being there for the people around you is very necessary even if you feel as the person is withdrawing themselves from the outside world. The world contains of many good but also evil things. We have the power to take charge and proactively deal with our own emotions. Handling mental health and physical responses will lead us into a happier and wiser mentality, making life more enjoyable and seem a little easier. Like Andrea Balt said, turn your demons into art your shadows into a friend, your failures into teachers, your weaknesses into reasons to keep fighting. Don't waste your pain. Recycle your heart. Everything life throws at you leads to a blessing or a lesson. So never give up even at your darkest moments.